Welcome back to the narrative. Sean Richards announces he won't run for re-election as the political leader of the People's Action Movement, PAM, in St. Kitts after 12 years as the leader of the party. He led the party through that ill-fated relationship called Team Unity. Now he says he's stepping away for fresh blood. He didn't quite attain a leadership, which was one of the reasons why Team Unity came crashing down. The issue of who would be prime minister after Timothy Harris? Harris not wanting to give up the role. And uh, joining me on the narrative now is Peter Wickham, political analyst and pollster, to talk about Sean Richards' announcement. And later on in the interview, I'll ask him about the viability of Emlyn Pear in Grenada as a possible political leader of the U New National Party, which is currently led by opposition leader Dr. Keith Mitchell. That party going through uh, some... There's some tough times, I suppose, in, in, in getting itself to convention uh, where a political, the political leader race is expected to be contested. Peter, welcome to the program. Thank you. Good to be with you, Calista, again. Yeah, it, 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 it's been a while, and we're going to get it's to been this. It's been a while. Because, because <laughs> I, I know it, it, it's the first warm day of spring, and I know you want That's to That's right. <laughs> spring has sprung. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, and uh, Sean Richards has sprung from Pam. Mm -hmm. um, he's announced that he won't, when 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 uh, convention comes up in the summer, he won't be mm -hmm. uh, putting himself up for re-election. Uh, what do you make of his announcement at this point in time? Is he doing a good for the party or a bad? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I listened with, with great interest to your interview, and I was happy that he chose to sit with you and have an extensive conversation. And um, I, I think that Sean is, generally speaking, a very frank and honest person. Um, I think he's a politician that is well-intended, uh, and he's a politician that made some fundamental errors. Um, I think the fact that he's taken this decision suggests that in a moment of quiet reflection, Sean, Sean realizes that, you know, he made some errors and he has to fall on his sword. And, and moreover, that there's really nothing further for him in relation to the leadership of, of, um, of Pam. And, and that, you know, his bid to become Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis is one that has failed. So he needs to look at other alternative professional endeavors. Apparently, he's doing a PhD and he is looking at some other business interests. And I think that it's, it's, it's good that not only has he been doing these things, but he now has the maturity politically to say that, look, this is what I'm doing, I'm moving on. Um, I, I have been critical of him in the recent past because I felt that a lot of his actions, certainly within the immunity, lack political maturity. Uh, but I, however, think that I'm happy that finally, you know, some, some level of maturity has presented itself and he has decided that the best thing he can do for the party is to step aside. So I support him 100%. Um, you know, some would argue that it took him a little long to come to that conclusion. My understanding is that he's been under pressure from within. Uh, and he has now finally made his, his position clear. And uh, yeah, let's see, let's see what happens hereafter. You you said he made some errors. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Team Unity might be <laughs> might be one of them. But what are these? What what are some of these um, mistakes yeah. that you believe he made along the way that mm -hmm. has got us to this point now? No, I don't think Team Unity was a mistake. I thought that Team Unity was uh, a masterstroke politically. Um, you know, the last time that Pam was in office, uh, it was in office in coalition with um, the, uh, I believe it was uh, the, Pam was in coalition with NRP as well. So the last time they were in office, it was a coalition government. Uh, and they were in a coalition government again. So I didn't think that the problem was the coalition. Um, I, I took some issue with the conclusion that he made that, um, you know, Timothy Harris was unwilling to give up the post as prime minister. Uh, I think that he rushed to judgment, and that's probably one of the mistakes in relation to that. You know, in politics, I always think that you should never be like the dog that is grabbing for the bone and, and essentially catching at the shadow. And I think that that's essentially what he did. Um, he was in a very comfortable position where he was Deputy Prime Minister. Uh, he had essentially his pick of ministerial portfolios and he was able to do this. Um, I think that he allowed Mark Bradley to get under his skin and convince him that there was greater uh, fruit out there to be gained. Um, I, I'm not sure who advised him politically. It certainly wasn't me and suggested to him that he could have won uh, a, a government in association with CCM. 
Um, you know, I, I know the organization CCM and I understand the politics of St. Kitts and Nevis. And it, they, there was not a situation where I felt that the outcome where he could have won and triumphed um, Pam and CCM on their own is something that could have happened. You know, a big part of the problem that people have with the People's Action Movement is the, the leadership challenge. Um, what the association with Team Unity offered was essentially a leader that was, was, was popular. You know, Timothy Harris, say what you like, was a popular leader. And against that background, he did so well in the election just preceding the one that, that collapsed. Um, so I'm not sure what happened, but there was this idea that Timothy Harris was unwilling to give up office. But the argument was that there was not time for Timothy Harris to give up office yet. Uh, my, my advice to Sean Richards at the time would have been, if, if I had been asked, you know, if you believe that Timothy Harris does not want to give up after two terms, which was a promise, wait until two terms pass, and if he doesn't want to give up, then you walk away from the coalition then. Uh, and you would have walked away from the coalition at a time when some of your members who were not pensionable would have been, and you would have had the opportunity to serve a full 10 years as a, as a government and you as a deputy prime minister for 10 years. And if at that point in time, there was an appearance that Timothy Harris was reneging on his agreement that he would only serve for two terms, is then you walk away at that point. But you, you walk away from a government and you, you bring down a government of which you are a part um, on the sixth year of its being in office, uh, 12 months after having won a resounding success at the polls, and you walk away from all of that on the argument that the person who is prime minister agreed not to serve or wants to serve beyond 10 years and you're only in year six. There's something highly illogical about it. There's something that doesn't make sense because you know you, you haven't checked to verify that you can actually win any seats. And there were people in there saying that exactly what happened would have happened. So you end up on the, the opposition, uh, you end up outside of government and all of your um, members, all of the persons who are ministers in PAM, uh, you know, people like Lindsey Grant and Jonah Powell, all of them who were ministers for the first time, walked away from a situation where they, they're no longer members of parliament, they're not pensionable, and the future politically is, is very bleak. What was the benefit of all of this? I, 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 I fail to understand. And the person that they were most angry with, which is Timothy Harris. Timothy Harris continues to be a member of parliament. He has been prime minister. He has been a member of parliament for 20 something odd years. And, you know, he is pensionable. Um, my, my argument is that ultimately you are essentially the biggest loser in all of this. It, it really didn't make sense. So those are the mistakes. Look, I, I'm happy that we can now close a chapter on all of this and say, let's look forward. Uh, and I'm anxious to see who will step up and take on the mantle of leadership in Pam. Uh, I'm happy that he has agreed that it should not be him. Uh, and I think that there are options in there and you know, which, whichever of these options present themselves um, has to look at how to get back into some kind of a coalition arrangement with Team Unit, with, with Timothy Harris at least, and the PLP. Um, that to me is the only way forward. And it's something that Sean Richards cannot negotiate because of the past. So let's hope that the new person that comes in, comes in with a mandate to say, let's sit down with the P PLP and, and let's try and negotiate the future of Palm to ensure that when the next election is called, there's some kind of a beneficial agreement between the two of them to divvy up the seats on St. Kitts and see if they can form a serious opposition to, to the current government. And I mean, politics is of, is, is of mm -hmm. a particular nature that where a future coalition between PLP and PAM is not uh, totally impossible. You think it's, 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 not, it's not, not at all. I think that it would have been impossible if, if Sean Richards was involved because I don't realistically think that Sean Richards can sit down with anyone and negotiate a coalition. Um, I got a sense that Timothy Harris is still disposed to the idea. <laughs> Uh, once the personalities change, you know, um, I also don't think that there's any benefit to a uh, hope of a, an agreement with um, CCM, certainly under the current leadership either. But again, you know, that's something that is is, is likely to change in the future and are uh, subject to change in the future. And let's see what happens there. But for the time being, yeah, it is the art of the possible. And I think that there can be possibilities where they agree and uh, they look towards some kind of a solid coalition going forward. And they hope that this time, great sense and logic prevails 
you know, to ensure that you don't have the mess that was last time. I mean, it, it, it was bothersome that one year after you win a resounding success with an increased majority, that these guys walked away from a government and find themselves in the opposition. Um, it's almost laughable, quite frankly. Uh, and I think that it goes down as one of the greatest political tragedies in the Caribbean that people have done them, to themselves. I mean, Sean Richards, now a spent force uh, uh, politically, I suppose, mm -hmm. um, wanting to be prime minister so much that he imploded the whole thing. Who can come now and, and, and sort of re-energize the party, refocus the party? Who, what's possible? Who's, who's there in terms of leadership for Palm? Who can emerge? Well, yeah. Palm has, I believe there are two deputy leaders. Um, there's a lady uh, who is uh, currently a deputy leader to Sean Richards. And then I think there's a party chairman um, who is a, a young man, a young lawyer. Um, my sense is that both of those would be in pole position to take over leadership. There was also mention of the same Jonel Powell that I mentioned earlier, who was a former minister, and, and he is seen as the type of person that could also put a challenge to leadership. He he's not been politically active, but um, you know there's there's those those are the the three individuals I think uh, are you know top of mind in terms of people's idea but yeah the fact that Palm has two deputy leaders and they also have a chairman it, it makes it easier for them to look at any of those individuals and say you know can we can we look at you going forward the fact that uh, Sean Richards is the only seat that they hold to, to some extent makes it easier because if it's not him then you just really need to look far and wide you are not constrained by who's in Parliament you have a free hand to pick someone who, who fits the bill and who's the best person for the job. And Pam, based on the, the, the political um, environment in St. Kitts and Nevis, it is impossible to see Pam getting into government outside of a coalition scenario. That, that would be my professional opinion. You know, Pam, Pam was the... Essentially, it was, I was outside of politics for a long time, and a big part of the reason was because, you know, you're dealing with Denzel Douglas, who was an outstanding leader, and, and you had nothing to offer. Pam went from a situation where they had no seats, and then they had Sean Richard's seat, and then they had uh, one, one other seat in Parliament, and it was on that basis that they were able to rise to prominence. In St. Kitts, you only have eight seats on the mainland, so it's not a huge um, pay to divide politically. So, against that background, um, yeah, I think that realistically i don't see them on their own being able to muster enough support politically that they could make a, a, a huge splash no. and uh turning now to another mm -hmm. leader who a, a, a political leader who is no sean richards he's not walking away doesn't mm -hmm. seem to be ready to walk away um, <laughs> <laughs> when 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 it appears he has become a liability um, for the party moving forward in Grenada. The NNP continues to um, waver on, on a convention and when that is going to happen. But one of the mm -hmm. most recent developments, apart from Peter David formally mm -hmm. notifying the party that he will run mm -hmm. at, at convention for leadership, Emmeline Pear has uh, said, she spoke to, she did an interview in which she said, should Dr. Mitch, should there be a vacancy, she would run. Mm -hmm. I'm all depending on, on Dr. Mitchell there again. Is Emmeline Pear a, a viable option to take over um, if Dr. Mitchell really is going, which is a whole other conversation which we'll yeah. get into. Well, most definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. I and mean, Pear's name has been mentioned a lot in leadership stakes before. So I think that a lot of people in Grenada are excited by the idea of a woman taking over from Dr. Mitchell. Certainly Dr. Mitchell, one would have said, would have rolled a pitch for women in the sense that he brought a lot of women into politics. So, you know, I, I think it's a great idea uh, and I would encourage her to, to, to come forward. Um, I don't think it surprises anyone in Grenada because for a long time people have felt that she would have been the kind of person who could succeed him. I, mean, I don't know if she has national popularity or popularity within the NNP. Um, you know, that's a, a different conversation, but certainly the idea that she's interested is good. Uh, it's not surprising because I think she has the necessary uh, character, you know, to, to pursue something like that. Um, 
the big thing is vacancy. And, you know, it was interesting when I listened to your interview with Sean Richards. Sean Richards was saying, you know, but once there's a vacancy, all kinds of people come forward. And I was saying the same exact thing in relation to the situation in Grenada, that there is this idea that there is only one person right now that is available to lead. And there's only one challenger, which is Peter David. But I understand politics, and the reality is that once you create a vacancy, people will come forward. But we don't know whether Calista Fari is interested in politics, and she may throw her hat in the ring. So the only way that you can create the opportunity, and we can see who else is out there, because there may very well be other people out there. You know, there were there were names mentioned of people who are living in the United Kingdom. Um, uh, look, there are a number of people who may be interested, and as I said, the best way to understand who is and who is not interested out there is don't, don't wait to say, well, when I see a name that's good, then I will go. You create a vacancy, and then you see who presents himself, and you know you can make a choice among among those persons. So it's some fascinating stuff, and I, I wish Evelyn Pierre well, uh, as, as do I wish uh, Peter David well. And well, let's say let's let the best person win. But the, the key thing really is the vacancy, which doesn't seem to be happening in any hurry. And um, you know, I, I, I also think that what prove it present, prevents other candidates that may be good from throwing their hat in the ring is the fact that they know very well that there's going to be no vacancy. So they say, like, why would I even bother to put up my hand for a job that is not. Um, is not come up <laughs> yeah but but, yeah. but 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 peter all of the all of the data um you don't tell me what your polls say you tell me oh the client mm -hmm. contracted me so you don't tell contracted. me what they say, but <laughs> i think i know what some of your your research shows mm -hmm. anyhow um but a lot mm -hmm. of a lot of the and, and the, the, the perception of grenadians it is that the vacancy whether or not dr mitchell wants to make create a vacancy mm -hmm. when a vacancy needs to be created that the party needs to be responsible and take yeah. the side on and make a decision because based on the last election results based on how mm -hmm. everything came down mm -hmm. that really nnp cannot successfully move forward or as successfully as it probably should with dr mitchell in that position that he's yeah. now uh, continues to be a liability yeah. to the party can he be redeemed Calista, I, I, again, you know, professionally, I agree with you entirely. Um, the evidence suggests that it will be very, very difficult for the NNP to recover under Dr. Mitchell. And I do think that one can argue or one can see that there's a substantial course of opinion in Grenada that suggests that Dr. Mitchell is, is um, you know, he's a, he's a leader who did well, but his time has passed. Dr. Mitchell has now been beaten by Tillman Thomas, and he's now been beaten by Dicker Mitchell. And he's been beaten by someone who, in my opinion, was one of the weakest politicians in the Caribbean, which was Stillman Thomas. He's now been beaten by an individual who was in politics a year, and he beat him. Uh, a young person, you know, one could say a brash and wet behind the ears, uh, a political baby, quite frankly, and he beat Dr. Mitchell. Dr. Mitchell is a political giant in this region, and the fact that he is being beaten by persons like this suggests that Grenadians feel that it's time for him to rest. Now, I don't know that it's necessarily an indictment on him or all that he has achieved, but it's an indictment on the fact that people have essentially reached Mitchell exhaustion. Well, Keith Mitchell exhaustion. Um, the challenge is that there's another reading for all of this, and the other reading is that on the last occasion that people disposed of it, they took him back after a short space of time because they found that the alternative wasn't filling their eyes. I think that the expectation this time around, especially as you're having some of the same kind of problems emerging again, is that he can be redeemed if Grenadians come to the opinion that, you know, that there's things are not going well and they were better off under, under Keith Mitchell. Um, I suspect that that is a big part of his argument. My feeling, however, is that this time around it's going to be different because I don't believe that uh, the commissioner is as bad as... Uh, as uh, as what? Former Prime Minister, sorry, uh, not as bad as as, as you, you, you the previous Prime Minister. There and I was so no, no, I was just I was forgetting. I was having a I was having a serious moment. Tillman Thomas. Oh, Tillman Thomas. Right. Okay. I don't think that he was. I don't think that he's as bad as Tillman Thomas. Uh. Certainly in terms of holding the party together, because Tillman Thomas's real challenge was that the party broke up, the government collapsed under Tillman Thomas. Um, I think that Dicker Mitchell is doing a better job of the politics and holding it together. And once he's able to hold it together, once he's able to put some some um, some wheels on a donkey cart, 
and, and, and roll on to the next election, he probably will hold on simply because, you know, the alternative right now is someone that people have already said, look, we, we, we don't want to go back there. So the, the, the readings I said are, are two. You can either take the evidence that presents itself from what is the strong feeling on the ground, um, and, and certainly in you know what profession you can glean from the public opinion from the uh, election results, or alternatively you can take an argument that said you know history could repeat itself, so I'll give them a chance. My my thing is that the critical ingredient in that history repeating itself argument is the collapse of the Tillman Thomas administration. I do not believe that the Mitchell's administration will collapse. The Mitchell's administration will make mistakes. It will continue to make mistakes. I think that it has made some major unforced errors, but ultimately, I do believe that Dick and Mitchell will not collapse in the way that Tillman Thomas well did. And as a result, look, he's stronger now because he's actually taken on a, an additional MP. Tillman Thomas is going in the other direction. All of this says that right now, um, in order to get the government away from, from Dick and Mitchell, you have to win it away from him. And I can't see Keith Mitchell being that person to beat him. So. If the NNP is comfortable in opposition and doing it, they will continue. But you know, um, the only person that can make the decision is is, is Dr. Mitchell. <laughs> Let's see what but, happens. But, but, but also, Peter, the, the party has mm -hmm. an executive. The party has a chairman and a general secretary and uh, people who mm -hmm. can uh, influence and and, and, and and push the and, and the party has a constitution. That, that, mm -hmm. that has to be followed. And none of this is happening. The, 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 the executive seems to be non-existent. Dr. Mitchell has gone and created his own structure. I believe he's calling them leads and deputy leads. Mm -hmm. He's putting his own structure in place. He's influencing the removal of delegates here and there um, and mm -hmm. seems to be the one who is continuing to run things. That, 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 that he still continues to be a force that, that people are stepping back and allowing him to do whatever he wants that the change that that the nnp may need for its own survival may not happen yeah i, I think though that calistra you i heard you say just know that it has an independent executive that can operate independently and i asked if you sure that they do i look political well, parties in the caribbean are not designed that way right now and they know that they can you know i don't know that they can um I heard um, one of your um, your colleagues had a, a broadcast from a funeral that Dr. Mitchell spoke at and read a eulogy, and he spoke about the fact that um, you know that someone uh, attempted to replace him, and, and the person ended up dying. And you know, it, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, well. I think I think that we understand we understand that political parties in the Caribbean are not really designed to be these mass based political parties. And I I'm, I'm fascinated when you look at the Labour Party and you look at the Conservative Party, and they have committees within the Conservative Party that can make independent changes to leadership, four of them, you know, in, in, in recent times. Uh, and they can do that. Uh, they have a very elaborate mechanism to manage it. That comes in a situation where you have 600 candidates and 300 MPs sitting at any one point in time. In a situation like Grenada, where you only have 15 people, ultimately the political parties have come along as a way to facilitate and support the leader. And it's not peculiar to the NNP. It's the same for the for the NDC. It's the same for the PNM and the Democratic Labour Party and the Barbados Labour Party. All of these are leader centric parties. And you have this executive that does not uh, produce a leader. You have this executive that supports the leader. So you have executive general counsel. The leader can co op people onto them. You know, and you, you have a situation in which you know, one person is leader and the person is praised, the person moves away or dies or whatever, and then another person comes up and that person is praised similarly. The, the political parties don't have that capacity to produce candidates in many instances, far less leadership. So I, I would disagree with that argument that the independent, that there's any independence within the, the, the arms of operation of the NNP. And I will go further and say that the NDC is no different. Because I remember when Peter David was General Secretary of the NDC, and he was doing his hardest to try to see if it could steer the NDC away from the abyss that it was facing. And what happened? You talked about the um, Palm just now, and when all of this was going on in terms of the, the collapse, the imminent collapse of, of the whole movement, one of the senior members of Palm 
had written the op-ed and he was basically saying, you know, that this thing is not going to end well. And it was a position that I supported. Indeed, when I read it, I thought that it was something that I had written myself that he had stolen. Um, because it was very similar to opinions that I had been expressing professionally. Um, and, you know, uh, Sean Richards decided, you know, I'm the leader, I will make the decisions, and this is where we're going. And so the leader has the capacity in the Caribbean to take the party down with it. Uh, sadly, that that's what I suspect that is going to happen here because there's no there are no independence of these bodies. These bodies are to support, but not necessarily to guide and influence. So the only the only hope might be uh, as long as Dr. Mitchell remains determined for his one for the road, his elusive one for the road. Then the only other solution might be um, what he did to Herbert Blaze, which is have a coup. Hmm. I don't really know that that kind of thing is going to happen. Um, Herbert Blaze by that time was in a wheelchair and, you know, what, generally speaking, was, was weakened physically in a way that Dr. Mitchell is not. No, I don't think that anybody well, can pull well, that, off that. that, well, that, that that's type for sure. Of, that, that's for sure. Yeah, I don't think anybody can pull off that kind of arrangement with Dr. Mitchell because Dr. Mitchell is alive and well and, you know, healthy and he, he's fighting. And once he's fighting, it's difficult. What, what I think would be the interesting comparison would be the situation in St. Kitts, where uh, Dr. Drew was able to wrest leadership away from, um, from Denzel Douglas. He, he did this after the St. Kitts and Davis Labour Party was beaten not once but twice. And I think that a second defeat would seal the fate of Dr. Mitchell in a way that the first defeat wouldn't. The problem, however, is that a lot of these players now are seeing we don't want to wait for the second defeat. We want to ensure that we can win next time. So if you were going to give a comparison, I would say the St. Kitts and Davis Labour Party comparison because Dr. Mitchell is very much like Dr. Douglas in terms of the stubbornness and the determination to continue. Um, yeah. No, and, and just what we did not do, I want to take a look at, at Emmeline Pear mm -hmm. and uh, Peter Davis Peter side David. by side in terms of the merits um, for <laughs> leadership of the, of, the, of the new national party. What do you think? Mm -hmm. um, I, I think Grenadians, Grenadians feel that Peter David is more politically savvy. Um, Peter, Peter David has been an old war horse in, in the politics. You know, he can date his, his political involvement back to the revolution. Um, he was within the NDC. Uh, he rose within the NDC. Um, he uh, crossed over to the, to the NNP. Um, with the expectation a lot of people had that he would become leader when, when Dr. Mitchell gave up. Indeed, it was argued that a lot of people felt that he came over because he was promised leadership. Um, so he, he is seen as a person that a lot of people assume or associate with politics for a long time. The, the problem is that that can be good and bad because that can mean that people see him as seasoned and that can also mean that people see him as no different to Dr. Mitchell in that he is he's all in this business. And you know, one of the things I think that um, that Dick and Mitchell presented that excited Grenadians is that he, he had nothing to do with the revolution in the 70s. He had nothing to do with the revolution or the coup. Uh, and he was not part of that conversation that took place in Grenadian politics for so many years that was like a recurring decimal with the same people being channeled over and over again. So he brought excitement. Uh, I think that this is a challenge that Peter David has because he was part of that conversation uh, going back all of those years. So as a result, Evelyn Pierre presents herself as someone who is fresher to politics than Peter David. Maybe she's not as steep, but she's fresher. And she's someone who came in um, more recently and as a result, doesn't have a lot of the baggage of, of those old days. And I think that that is the advantage that she will bring in terms of her, her own message and her own lobby, that there's a freshness that she has. Uh, she's also a woman. And, you know, we, we have an, uh, a feeling that um, politics in the Caribbean now has to be, or the world today, has to be very uh, gender uh, diverse. And, you know, maybe it's time that Grenada went in the direction of having a woman in politics. And I think that, uh, you know, the kind of benefit, advantages and steps that Mia Motley has taken, you know, we, we now have a female Secretary General of, of the um, Commonwealth as well as of CARICOM. And I think a lot of people are excited by the possibility that, 
you know, Grenada can now make history and do what uh, Barbados and Trinidad and Tobago and Jamaica and Dominica did uh, by putting a woman in, in the driver's seat. Uh, and that would be something which I think that she is probably um, marketing heavily uh, in the hope that Grenadians would say, let's, let's make history by, by giving her the job, by le like giving her the job to Alice Lee, the NMP, and see what happens from there. The, the stakes are a lot, lot higher than leading history, so uh, making history. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, because the gender issue concerns me that we may look at a candidate and decide, okay, oh, oh, it's time for a female. I, for me, that does that's not sufficient to fly, um, mm -hmm. uh, to even consider. I mean, uh, the political leader ultimately can become the prime minister of the country. I'm not sure saying that, oh, well, you know, let's, let's, let, let's be politically correct and, and have a woman as a prime minister is sufficient and not fair to the people of the country. I think it has, mm. to, be, it, it has to be deeper than that. It has to be based on, on, on competence mm. and, char and character. Yeah, and I, I, I'm the first to say, let's not bring any woman and give her the job because I don't believe that any of the names I've mentioned, you know, um, in Portia Simpson, Miller, Kamala Passab, Assessor, um, certainly Damien Jr., Charles, uh, Mia Motley, none of these are people that anyone just stuck up and said, I can give you the job because you're a woman. Um, I don't know whether Grenadians see Emlyn Pierre in that regard uh, or whether Grenadians see her, you know, somewhat differently. Um, that's something that Grenadians will have to assess for themselves. But I agree with you that I, I would not want to, and I honestly don't think Emlyn Pierre would also want to feel, yeah, well, give me, give me the leadership of the party uh, in the hope that Grenadians will say, let's just say, like any woman that comes along and, and go. Um, the reality is that politically in the region, women have done less well than men in all kinds of leadership contests. So while we have had female leaders, uh, the reality is that you put a woman um, in a uh, political decision making the, the odds are against her not for her so i don't think that emily pierre will benefit from any great amount of sympathy um if however she is demonstrating that she is a woman of substance uh then she has a she has a reasonable chance of, of victory of course she has to wait to see whether there'll be vacancy <laughs> <laughs> and, and 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 that in itself uh, uh concerns me as well that that there she is you know uh, falling in line with what the man wants and waiting on the man to make the decision and waiting on the man to say go or stop um, you know us girls are trying to move away from that kind of thing you know <laughs> but, I think that we're being we are, we are expecting both her and too much of her and Peter David to force Dr. Mitchell so in other words because of the candidate and because of the stature of the candidate maybe that will force dr mitchell to say okay i will uh, i will declare a vacancy and, and i don't think that either of them have the capacity to do that i don't think anyone the, the only person that is in a position to do that is the almighty if indeed it does exist i i don't think i don't think he's going i don't think he's going anywhere either i think it, it's so it's going to come down to the delegates um at convention um, deciding, not even the executive, but delegates at the, at, at, at the convention, and how but, each, but which, each, each party mm -hmm. can mobilize their support. Yeah, which is another point that I would would raise. Um, if, if I were advising Peter David and Emily Pierre, I would tell both of them if Dr. Mitchell decides to keep his hat in the ring, then I, I wouldn't run against him. You know, I, I, I think it is highly unwise to challenge him. In a situation where if you challenge Dr. Mission and Dr. Mission wins, essentially that's it for you in politics. So I personally wouldn't encourage either of them to challenge him. I would say to them, look, if he creates a vacancy and he says I'm not running, then fine. But you know, what happened to Denzel Douglas and St. Kitts where um, he allowed a convention to go forward and then he said that if he is challenged, that he will not um, be, be competing. Um, it was an interesting situation because when the challengers came forward and he saw himself being challenged, he said, well, I'm not running because I will not run against someone and be defeated. And I think, you know, that's also good on him. So in this situation, I would say the same thing to two of them. Don't, don't, if Dr. Mitchell's name is in the hat, let it be the only name and let the party essentially deal with the consequences of what, you know, they're doing. Um, I also don't, honestly think that either of them stand a particularly good chance of winning the seats in the next election if 
um, if the party is being led by Dr. Mitchell, because Grenadians, I think, are going to take a dim view of the same thing all over again, unless, of course, the, the, the Dick and Mitchell administration collapses in the meantime. So which, which, you can which, hedge your bets. Which, which is what, you know, the, the, there are some who, who speculate that, that Dr. Mitchell is basically just hoping that the clock will run out or run out fast mm -hmm. enough. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's all the time we have. Most okay, no problem. Sorry. Thank you so much yeah. for joining me. Good discussion as usual. Thanks a lot. My, my pleasure. Take care. Good chat with you. Right. This is The Narrative. I'm your storyteller, Calistra Farrier. More when we come back. <laughs>